Bible says the message of the cross is foolishness. Foolishness. Well, guys, what is going on? This is Brian Sumner. Welcome to the Foolishness Podcast. This is episode 83. I know we've missed a few weeks, possibly even a month or so. It's been crazy. My wife's mother is still going through the ALS. Uh, her body is not doing so well. Be praying for her. Her dad had a sudden heart attack, surgery the next day out of the hospital the next day. There's so much going on around the world. We can't complain, but lift them up. We're lifting you up. Thank you for tuning in with us today. I'm excited about this episode because a good friend of mine is jumping in. He's a skateboarder. He's a minister. He's a husband. Ladies and gentlemen, would you say what's up to Mr. Tim Byrne? What's going on, brother? All right. Hey, Brian Sumner and uh, and everybody listening in. Hello. Hello from Portland, Oregon. We have a sunny day today, so that's good. Wow. it's a, That's a miracle, right? I can it see kind it of reflecting is. in your face. If you are watching on YouTube, <laughs> behold the glory of sunny Portland. Closing out 2020 well. Amen. <laughs> yeah. 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 Totally, man. Right here. You've got the sun uh, reflecting on this uh, fantastic complexion in which you get here when there's no sunshine. So yeah, Ooh. no, it's awesome, man. So glad, so glad to be with you, brother. Well, what's your ethnicity? Cause you, you're, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty dark cause of the sun at Huntington, but you've got some pale complexity too. So, I mean, what, what's the family heritage? Where are you from originally? Like mm. family wise, is it English, German, Tim Irish. Burn is burn Irish. Irish, yeah, it's B Y R N E. Uh, it was O burn, they took the O off. Okay, so, man, yeah, so yeah, that's it. Let man. go with the so Irish. <laughs> and so, <laughs> as we totally. jump into this, there's so many places we could go. I, I want to encourage you, those who are listening, thanks for listening. But those who jump in on the YouTube, I believe that Tim even has some props for us today that he's going to unpack later. And I don't know exactly what that is, but I'm guessing it's something for maybe a sneaker collection maybe figures. I don't know. We have a lot of funny things in common. We stay up to date throughout the week texting, not just about our faith, that's a given, but just in other ways. But as we get into this, uh, we are going to unpack how you minister to the youth, the work God has done in your life, how you go around the world and what that looks like having a wife. How does that play out in ministry? But just to jump in, me and Tim have a lot in common. One of the things that's absolutely different is that I'm a street skater, really. And Tim, you are originally a what? Freestyler? I'm a freestyle skateboarder. Yeah, man. Or freestyle flatland skateboarder. What does that mean? Yeah. Help him endow us <laughs> with this knowledge of freestyle. What is it? Yeah. Well, a kid like me, I grew up in a small town in the middle of Missouri in the Ozarks, and I had a piece of concrete to skate on. So um, I learned how to skate flat ground, utilizing mm-hmm. my skateboard at every angle. So yeah, that was it, man. Doing like pogo sticks, getting up on my hands, slipping footwork stuff and that actually came from as a younger kid being mm-hmm. a break dancer in the mid 80s okay. which is kind of funny yeah i actually did check this out speaking of props <laughs> speaking of props okay. yeah, most people talk of this but do they have it but yeah check it there there it is right there that's me 1985 break dancing what the, yeah so and for later those on, who are you know, listening yeah this is tim ben as a youth he must be nine or ten oh, flexing no, dude, in front five. of about you were five I and you were five. tall That's back my... then. And he is in a black <laughs> and white photo flexing in front of about 25 people with great track suits and hairdos. And he's on a piece of what is that lino or what do you call that? You know, that's linoleum. Okay. And when I, when I started skateboarding, that's where freestyle <laughs> like came in. Cause I had this piece of concrete. I'm thinking, well, dude, I just want to connect tricks and like put things together. This is crazy. Um, and, and what, set that off was watching uh-huh. if you remember gleaming the cube with yep. christian slater yep. it was on tnt network here in the states and i saw that little bit which i i learned to i learned later on it was rodney mullen but mm-hmm. yeah i saw this dude like in one spot b- bouncing on his board and flipping it and i was like dude i'm sold that's like break dancing so <laughs> rad so that's you it man that's where i got started though i didn't know it was called i thought it was called lino in england so the break dancers would get a square about eight by mm. eight that's what they would do. And, and I have to help people understand what Tim is talking about. A regular skateboard is about 32 to 33 inches, eight inches, nine inches wide. But a freestyle board is what? What's the absolute length? It's like, dude, I came prepared. Check this out. So this right uh, here, 
Uh-huh. This is a freestyle board. This is what kick flips were created on by a guy named Rodney Mullins. And wow. this board, look at this. I could even hold it. I, this is a seven, dude, this is like seven and a quarter, 27 yep. inches long. And me and you, Brian, I mean, what? I'm six, three, six, four. Yeah. You know, we're big dudes. And yeah. so, yeah, I'm I grew up skating. You're too- <laughs> I'm probably 240. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, but uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but guys, if you look online, I'll explain for you guys, this is literally a tiny board. And as Tim is referencing yeah. here, a guy called Rodney Mullen, who, whether he's a genius, a savant, he's someone that we all owe skateboarding history to. He, like Tim, probably prior to Tim, obviously, as a youth, on a spot of concrete, not very big in his father's uh, garage, did trick after trick after trick, mastered the ollie, the kick flip, the heel flip, the 360 flip, all these things. And this was a freestyle world for a while with Pierre Wellander, Pierre Andre. You just held up a Canadian uh, Mountie Kevin Harris board. Someone tell Karen Harris. We're talking about him on the podcast. Get him on here. Um, but what happened was freestyle kind of disappeared as Rodney Mullen's tricks evolved street but you remained a freestyle skater so you did this pretty much taking your break dance and square to the skateboard you stayed in one position you began to master these tricks and what age did you start skating i started skating in 1995 so i had this like flow right i I was into break dancing and then it was bmx bike flatland (laughs) i always liked just flatland stuff i like doing tricks i didn't Mm -hmm. care you know like you dude i wasn't i just didn't care about jumping stairs like guys like yourself or it was just not my thing i just wanted to be in a spot Mm -hmm. learn how to link things together so the break dancing the flatland bmx and then i discovered freestyle skateboarding and i had the perfect space for it a piece of concrete on the in the backwoods on a county road wow and that was it man uh but yeah, and I but I didn't but ride you got a traditional good, freestyle board. You well, got yeah, good. I didn't ride. Well, yeah, I will, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, I, yeah, I didn't grow up riding one of these. These were these were already out. I, you couldn't even find a freestyle board when I started mm-hmm. skating in 1995. I mean, mm-hmm. I had to ride a typical what's called what's known more as a popsicle shape. Um, and I didn't even know there was a freestyle board. I didn't know you needed special things. All I I just mm-hmm. got my board, learned how to get it up on its side, flip it multiple rotations, and it just went on and on Mm -hmm. and on and it's what i I skate but there are guys still today this is crazy when i look at these boards they skate these this is Mm -hmm. a thing they put the plastic skids on both sides they do a lot of the traditional tricks they're skating the traditional boards and it baffles me you mean Um, freestyle is today or still skating freestyle boards absolutely because i'm guessing companies out there well that's what i'm saying i'm guessing anyone that goes in the mall goes to zoomies maybe in an active I've never seen a freestyle board in a store unless generally the owner has been a freestyler. So there you are in the backwoods getting crazy with your skateboard. You get freestyle boards. This would eventually take you to a place where we're going to open up in probably a few minutes, but how you began to have a traveling ministry and God used skateboarding and obviously into marriage and life where you are today. But how do you go from the backwoods getting a freestyle deck to getting good enough to get noticed were you raised a Christian? When did you become a Christian? How does all that transition? Mm. Yeah, no, I, I wasn't a Christian. I would definitely not say I came from a Christian home. Um, I became a Christian when I was 20 years old. So from 95 to 2000, it mm. was just all about me and skateboarding. And how I got noticed was I, the, the nearest skate park was two hours away from where I grew up. So I'd have to, I got in my Honda, um, and I would drive to the skate park and it was around 1998 I would I was skating and usually when I would skate it's kind of like the break dance thing people would gather mm-hmm. and I had no idea that the Lord was going to use that that's crazy someday soon because <laughs> then it was all about tricks and hey check this out and I'd teach the kids or the you know I'd hang out with mm-hmm. other dudes and teach them tricks and then you know it was freestyle stuff it was interesting because as you know it was somewhat dead and when you saw it it was it's crazy to see so yeah um Anyway, I met a guy that owned a skate shop there, and uh, he had some ties in the industry. And anyway, and this so, is in what state? This is in Missouri. This was okay. actually in a town called Columbia, and uh, yeah, they had a great skate park. So I'd go there, and yeah, I got picked up. Skate skate shop sponsored, and that's where that kind of started. Um, <laughs> but then after I'd become a Christian is when everything else got started. But yeah, we'll get into that. And then, so because because I must have been coming to America when I was around 98, 99, started in 92, 93, 
got you know invited by Jeff Rowley to arrive for Flip, and then obviously Andrew Reynolds and that to arrive for Birdhouse and the rest. I was you know that book tooth amateur kid coming over, so you were already skating in the mix. Things were going on. Um, and then how do you become a believer? Did someone witness to you? Did you just hear it? Were you in church? Hmm. Yeah, I just got super depressed, man, mm-hmm. and overwhelmed um, with just hopelessness, dude. Long story short, I ended up at a church service after hitting rock bottom, getting to that place where, you know, they don't make enough drugs at that mm-hmm. point to shove in your body to numb the pain or enough alcohol to drown out those types of sorrows. And mm. I got into this, this place. It's this church, and I, I still remember pulling my car into that parking lot, looking at the cross and thinking, at any other time, I would have laughed at it, right? Because the cross is mm-hmm. foolishness to those who are perishing, but mm-hmm. when you're saved, it's the power of God. But it was that mm-hmm. night that I would cross that threshold. So on any other night, I would have laughed at all of it. Mm-hmm. But I went inside this place. It was a Wednesday night. I was really entertaining the idea of just ending my life. Mm-hmm. And uh, I basically was internalizing the words, God, last chance. I don't know what you're going to do with my life after this. So obviously I had some sort of inkling or belief of some sort of God, right? We, I think we're all given a, a, some sort of a measure of faith in our heart, right? Ecclesiastes mm-hmm. 3.11, if I remember that verse, right? Um, and, and so there I am. And I just hear the gospel message one more time. And whether this was said from stage or not, because I know at that point, the pastor had closed his Bible and the sermon time was over. But what I heard was, Mm. you can't do enough sin to make God stop loving you. You can't separate yourself from God or make enough bad choices to where the cross Mm. of Jesus can't reach you. And I heard that Jesus exchanged Mm. his perfect life for mine. And that's really what came through clear. Mm. Jesus exchanged his perfect life for mine. I never really paid attention to what people call the gospel message, though I grew up in what is considered the Bible belt. Churches are everywhere. It's like coffee shops in Portland, right? I mean, they're everywhere. But I was, I found myself at the front of that place praying and asking Jesus to be the Lord of my life. And when God invaded my life and I turned from this thing called sin, which I recognized, well, this is what's leading me to death. This is why I feel the Mm -hmm. way I do. I'm not meant, I'm not meant to live like this. Yeah. I'm meant to live for God. I'm created by him. So again, I wasn't putting all those pieces together at that moment, but I was putting the major piece together. And that is Jesus Mm -hmm. didn't just die for me on the cross. He died as me. He doesn't just die for us. He dies as us in our Mm. place, pays his price for sin, raises from the dead. And it was that night when I put my trust in him, Yeah, it was like God raised me from the death grips of sin, raised me to a new life, right? What the Bible says. Mm. Um, And that's many of you that are listening, you know what I'm talking about. If you're a born again Christian, you you remember that. Whoa, I remember when the blinders came off, the switch flipped on. It was amazing. And so, yeah, dude, I hugged everybody around me. I was so stoked working. On, I was actually working on a highway department at the time. I couldn't wait to get back to my job and tell those dudes that Jesus is Lord. They need him to get back to skating with my friends, tell them the same thing, get home to tell my dad, my mom, uh, anybody that would have, that would listen. Um, but yeah, I had no idea at that point. That skateboarding but why did you anything. pull into a church? Did someone invite you? Or did you just drive in? Did you just uh, did you go in and listen? Yeah. Yeah, no, great question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you don't just you know, arrive think, in church. A lot of the guys listening, especially in England or places like Australia, they don't even they think going to church involves a vicar and a priest and something you would see in the end of Home Alone that you just pray at an altar, you know, at Christmas. <laughs> you actually ended up going to a church and heard about Christ. Dude, I actually ended up going to a church that proclaimed the gospel. Something was said <laughs> that got me. I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> I, I had heard about I'd heard about this place. I want to say, I want to say, Brian, that my mom had maybe had gone there, mm. um, but I was all alone that night. I drove my car in. It was a Wednesday night. I was just really frustrated. And, and I don't know. I don't know what the next days were going to look like mm-hmm. if I would have been in my life or not. But I was at a place where that was scaring me. You know, I'm so glad that now we wow. have suicidal awareness. Praise and there's God. a lot of attention brought to that. But back then, I would say I felt shame just for thinking that way. I yeah. felt guilty for just having those thoughts. Like, man, if anybody knew that I'm even thinking like this, this I'm, I'm messed up, mm. you know, and uh, there I am. And I, I got saved, dude. And, well, I, couple, and I know that was seeing my sin and, <laughs> it get, you know, receiving the greatest saying, gift ever though, given. A couple of things you're saying is, for one, freestylers are pretty intense. 
Um, I mean, Rodney Mullen did a TED talk. Why are they intense? Because it's you and simply your feet and your tricks. You're not maybe going to the skate park like Jude does. You know, we went the other day and he goes with his five friends and they're all goofing off and doing whatever. You are in the back of a woods sitting there doing trick after trick after trick. You're getting the victory. You're getting the defeat. Life comes at you. Whether that's how I know Rodney Mullen said he's just as intense, certain people. But what Tim keeps saying is the gospel, the gospel. It wasn't until I became a Christian I knew what this meant. The gospel is good news. It's the good news that though this world is wretched and fallen apart, God sent his son Jesus. And as Tim just said, he died on the cross as you. The Bible teaches that when Adam fell in the book of Genesis, we came from Adam. The first Adam fell. But Tim, of course, you know, we get to the New Testament and the Bible refers to Jesus as the second Adam. He's the perfect man who never sinned. So we died in the first Adam, but when Christ lived perfect, died perfect, a sinner's death, he never sinned for you and me, for Tim and Brian, resurrected. We, if we confess him as Lord, and Tim didn't know exactly what that meant other than I'm in the Bible belt. I get what the cross is. I see what my sin is, just like the demonized guy or the woman at the well. Um, she sees as a prophet. She gets to hear and understand. She's awakened. You came to faith that night. And guys, if you catch what Tim just said, I mean, this could be a story out of the pages of the gospel. He went off into the local town and just wanted to tell everyone about Jesus. So so you go off into the local town, freestyle Tim. You begin to talk about your faith. But obviously, here's the thing. This is important to skateboarding. Is skateboarding is this close-knit family. It's almost jockish. It, we act like we're not but we're very like, wear this, do this, here's the guidelines. And we're so accepting of those on the outskirts because it's all part of it. And it's very punk in the traditional kind of, like Lance Mountain would say, punk isn't being tough with spikes and fighting. It's being nerdy and artsy and off in your own will. That was originally what punk was. It just got kind of crazy, you know? But I'm saying that to say skating was very inclusive, but still exclusive. So how does someone that's a freestyler that comes to faith as we have talked about even prior, how do you go from that to eventually getting sponsored, getting a pro model as a freestyler, which I didn't even know many existed when I turned pro. So unpack that journey for us. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> dude, I remember just that night at that church, what I wanted most as I just wanted to wake up and feel hope and feel joy man. and man, it was, there was so much more than that. Like I, it was that revelation that God is real. Like he created mm. the heavens and the earth. Like he knows every hair on my head, the thoughts he has for me outnumbers mm. the grains of sands on the world's beaches for, for us. That's the thoughts he has for us. It's amazing. Mm. And I got, I'm like, Whoa, this is so true. Everybody has to know. Um, yeah, dude. And just growing up in my town is a, is a freestyler. I mean, freestyle skateboarding, dude, it was never cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was not cool. Like uh, it seemed like every dude I grew up <laughs> skating with used to tell me, dude, you got so much board control. Like, why don't you do this, this, and this? You would be insane. Get a real you board. Know? Yeah, get, yeah. No, no, no. I had a real board. No, 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 no. I did that. I, that was my saving grace, dude. Okay. Like you didn't, you did and you did not skate a freestyle board. Dude, okay. no, you, that was, that was already done. Mm -hmm. No, my saving grace, but I did skate a normal skateboard. And okay. Like, you know, side, side street deck and did the freestyle tricks, which, but with that said, I still did freestyle tricks and I mm -hmm. still was, you know, I'd be skating spots and I'd, be in one area going back and forth and yeah just doing routines i guess i didn't yeah it's like break again it goes back to break dancing i went wow. i had power i had power moves and i had my footwork and that's what i did well anyway um <laughs> dude i just you know it's like what you're saying it's that close-knit community people that knew me saw the change in my life mm. matter of fact the guy i got my first skateboard from john hartley i remember seeing him at walmart and he goes dude, are you like kidding about all this Jesus stuff? You know, it was like that. I was like, whoa, mm -hmm. it's, they're really, this is different. And mm -hmm. then I, and then a guy I skated with every day at that point um, was a local college student, um, engineer guy, brilliant guy, very analytical. I mean, I led him to Christ by opening up the back of this Bible that somebody had given me that had the Lord's prayer. And I, I don't even know if that's even, wow. you know, whatever. I just said, mm -hmm. dude, this is like, pray this way. And you know, God was using these, 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 these things was using something like that and yeah man i skated obviously but um <laughs> yeah so how did how did the whole pro thing come about and getting sponsored and well because you're the, the tim ben i heard of as i was watching form one 
as I would later come to faith and be like, oh, this t- that name rings a bell. And you would have these crazy tricks here and there that stood out because no one was freestyling. So how do you go from where you were living to Oregon even or to Portland, the rest? And how do you have a board as a freestyler? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what Brian is saying, and dude, you're totally right. Freestyle was as how did this thing. miracle guy, work? Yeah. yeah the, miracle, <laughs> the only guy you saw do it or really could get away with it at that time was Rodney Mullen. That yeah. was it. Um, and he skated a street board and he did other things. Well, anyway, mm-hmm. I was a purist. I'm a freestyler through and through. Um, so a buddy of mine, this is rad, Brian. I, I had a friend of mine that took me to a music festival. It was a month after I became a Christian. And it was a music festival that used to take place in the Midwest called Cornerstone. All the rock bands were there. It was a four day thing. And there was a skateboard company there doing demos called Mana Skateboards. Mm-hmm. And I hung out with those guys. This is crazy. Gary Hart, the guy that started Man of Skateboards, grew up breakdancing. Mm-hmm. So this is nuts. Said he came up to me, uh, I think it was like third day in, you know, Judd Heald's all blasting around. Oh, by the way, yeah. So Man of Skateboards, yeah. yeah. Judd Heald, uh, Scott Yamamura. We had Lenny Kirk on the team, crazy. which I was like, that's crazy. Uh, he, he wasn't wow. there very long, but he was on our team. Um, Anthony Carney, uh, eventually Sierra Fellers, and anyway, Dave mm-hmm. Nelson and those guys. Um but yeah, the team manager, Gary Hart, who started it, came up to me and he saw me do all these little tricks. And he's like, dude, you ought to, I want to give you boards. And those guys, even those guys, like Judd, you know, Judd's going, dude, I don't know if we should hook. Mm-hmm. Like, he's a freestyle skater. Like, because really Judd's flying that. around on the fence Judd's doing nose totally. picks, nose blunts, farm boy. Dude, yeah. He's a farm boy, dude. He's blasting everything, you yeah. know? And, uh, but anyway, they put me on and I started out as flow. Well, a month later, this, this tour comes up mm-hmm. and, um, I'm back home at this time. I'm on the highway department. There's this movie that had come out called Extreme Days. And it had a rock band, a Christian rock band called uh, PAX 217. And they wanted to put a tour around that, like a 30-date tour. Mm. Um, And then lo and behold, MANA, why all these opportunities came up afterwards that I was a part of was because they were tied into a a management company that booked all these huge Mm -hmm. Christian artists. And so anyway, man, I was the only one. It was Judd. And then I was the only one other than Judd that was available to go do this tour. It was like 30 days, got paid a hundred bucks a day. <laughs> like, sign me up. I'm going to quit my job wow. on the highway department, my union job. That's going to be possibly a union job on the highway department to go get a hundred bucks a day. And a lot of faith. Paid. But what's rad, dude, is, yeah, so I got on that tour. I got on a Greyhound bus, dude, you green as could be from Rolla, Missouri, go through East St. Louis, total sketch, South Side Chicago. Judd picks me up. I meet on this tour, dude. And I started to see what this was all about. You know, the music would play. Mm-hmm. Judd would have this demo kit and be out in the parking lot. I would do my freestyle stuff. Judd would blast around and he'd get on the mic and he'd share the gospel. And uh, I was just young as could be in the Lord. I mean, I'm two months old. I, uh, three months, two or three months old mm-hmm. in the Lord. I can't remember which, but then I just gotten baptized. I mean, and I'm watching all of this. I'm watching people get saved and turn mm-hmm. from sin and respond by raising their hands. And, um, yeah, man. And that's, uh, that's so, what got me on that deal. So you oh, thought boy. it was a tour, but God just calls it evangelism, basically. And, and some would challenge that because they say, you know, don't encourage those who are young to be teachers and blah, blah, blah. And we're not talking about church structure. What we're talking about here is someone who, like I said, the demonized guy just knew the Holy Spirit had got a hold of him, had saved him, had his testimony, knew he was a sinner. I say that to defend a lot of skate ministries because sadly, a lot of skate ministries, some of the kids, they get in the good, but they might not be about their faith. Where for you, you were already about your faith. And so you're watching Judd, who's a maniac sharing the gospel, who's built probably as many ramps around the world as you know, Paul Anderson and the rest of them. You're seeing this guy immediately beginning to share his faith, which would happen to me years later. I got thrown into the deep end right away. Go share your faith. So you begin to do this. More guys become part of the mana team. And mana, for those listening, mana is a reference to in the days of the wilderness for Israel, when God will provide for them. Mana simply means, what is it? So if I say, what is mana skateboard? You go, well, what it is, is (laughs) a bunch of guys who love Jesus. And he's Lord, Lord's King of Kings inevitable perfect there we go so you're now doing this and just for those listening here's why they're doing this skate culture is huge you go to an event there's all these bands playing if you can get these guys to demo and do something the kids come around they pay attention they're now hearing the music they're getting the t-shirt they're getting the cds it sounds cheesy to many but guys there is a work in this world by the enemy 
to influence and infiltrate your homes through the television, through the programming. You know, a television brings vision, and it's not God's vision. And these programs program, and it's not the word of the Lord. Yes, there's Christian things out there. Yes, there's great examples. But here's God using some funky skateboarders like myself back then, beginning the share of the love for Christ. So this all happens. How does Gary convince people that someone called Tim Ben, who's out there ripping, obviously, should get a pro deck? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, let me let me preface yeah. Mana again. I mean, we were we were the idea of the brand was being in the industry, but not of it. It was yeah. a bunch of dudes that love Jesus, that just happened to be skateboarders and good skateboarders. But we, Brian, we weren't like you guys. We weren't birdhouse. We didn't have name recognition. So when we showed up to do demos and events, we had to actually <laughs> do like a show i mean not to say you guys did it but we couldn't just get off to the side and say hey man i didn't you see my cover last month or the spread and you know there was none of that so you didn't Judd have an had english blast accent every single time yeah. i didn't have an english accent dude no <laughs> totally you know judd would dude clear 360 the the, the freaking four foot yeah. quarter with the railing on the back and then i'm doing dark slides and freestyle sierras skating the box and the rails and i mean it was nuts and it was like a little show yeah it's impressive to earn that right to yeah. be heard and preach the gospel um so mm. where did that all come in with gary uh it goes it was a it was a 411 uh -oh. which was crazy when he brought it up to, i think it was it probably was some of the other guys on the team probably judd and he's like dude i think tim i'm gonna put give him an ad which was a fortune for a little company like ours to yeah. we were doing you know i think it was like I don't, it was thousands of dollars a month to get in there. And so anyway, he, uh, in Thrasher yeah, he's, or he, 411 and 411, 411. And for those listening, but we were doing one is our skaters Bible back in the day. And um, you had magazines every month. You rarely had videos and 411 came out every three to four months. And I remember living with Andrew Reynolds, Jim Greco, Ali Collins, Ali Bulala. And we would drive to 411 because we knew them all, Chris Ortiz and everyone, get the first copy we could. We'd go home with munchies and just watch it over and over and over and go do all the tricks. So you, out of nowhere, Gary's going to put money up for Tim Ben, the freestyler, to have an ad in. And you said the other day, what, 4145? Is that the episode it, it was It was 45. In? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think you said that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, go on. Your ad first, comes out and what happens, one. which is huge. <sighs> Well, uh, it is, it's huge for freestyle, dude, real talk is, is to, to any freestyle skateboarder listening, this, this was huge. Like Gary was even told not to do it because mm -hmm. we had kind of developed a, a rhythm with our team and the communication of the brand quote, being legit or whatever yeah. that even means. And then they put a freestyle guy in doing, you know, some flat ground stuff, but the flat ground stuff was unique, you know, 360 flips to the Primo or to the side of the board, a dark slide, 360 flip on and on. But yeah. anyway, that got seen all credit to Gary, uh, telling everybody else that it would work. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, the Lord didn't tell seen, him not to think, do it. Yeah. <laughs> I think Per Willinder was the one who called, uh, and you, you obviously know Per from yeah. your days at Birdhouse, but yeah, Per is an old freestyle pro. He called Mana, and I think he's the one that talked to one of the owners and said, Hey, uh, we'd like to get Tim to a contest. So lo and behold, mm. I go to this contest. Um, and this is how it was told to me. I'm, I'm not 100% on that, but I'm pretty sure that's true. Um, they got me to a contest. It was Kevin Harris and all the best dudes. And they're all, like the world pro guys. Mm -hmm. And I entered as a pro. Um, and Gary, the guys on man were like, dude, so you're a flow guy. We're not, there's no am. We don't even know what to do with you. You're a freestyler. So just go pro. <laughs> like, what is, what is that? Well, this is he in because pair well the start of birdhouse with tony hawk i mean hookups with klein skate mafia with those guy and he's the only person i think to beat rodney mullen in competition right that's true one yeah, time true. so pair yeah. if you're listening i'm gonna tag him in these podcasts miss you brother god bless yeah go on so anyway uh, awesome you go as yeah, an so am not... or flow i mean yeah <laughs> Oh, I was a uh, flow to pro. That's how it worked, man. Um, <laughs> I, I played second place with all these dudes, Kevin Harris and a few others. And, um, and I was the only dude there really riding a, 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 a normal board. That was baffling in those days to freestylers. They're like, dude, how do you do all that stuff on that thing? Wow. And I didn't know any better. And um, yeah, so that turned me pro. I played second out of all those dudes, I guess, in the world. And, you know, the contest stuff I got out of eventually, I just didn't like it. And mm -hmm. I went back on tour doing demos, preaching the gospel. But this was my first board. I actually got my first board. So you saw the freestyle deck. But this was it. revolutionary for its time, man. This is my board. This is an old mana board. Um, wow. There's my name. Yeah. Um, it's very Habitat yeah, it's got and like Alien Workshop, anchored, huh? 
anchored in the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. Yeah, you know what? Right on. It is. It's got it that is. vibe for sure. It's killer. Gary, Gary did a number of series boards on this. And I want to say this might, the dots are Braille for mana. If I, yeah. I'm probably wrong about that, but it means something. <laughs> Guys, I'll be honest. I'm going to push this. We should uh, hit up Jude Heald from one of our private, I mean, past episodes, go over to Untitled, and we should reissue Tim's first board on Untitled because it's <laughs> no. sick. Dude, you gotta hear this, dude. This yeah. is actually, I hear this is actually valuable. Like people collect, like we collect stuff, right? <laughs> because it's the threat, it's the crossover from old freestyle to mm -hmm. new. I was like the young new pro that was a you pure freestyler. And yeah, totally, totally not. That's, not <laughs> That's a I'm rad saying. board, Tim. It, That's a good it's board. Funny. Thanks, man. Yeah. yeah. So this is this was our board. Well, Gary Hart, dude. He yeah. is not only the guy that put me on a team, he designed all of this. And mm -hmm. each of these this was a team board. But yeah, man, I, yeah, somebody hit me up. They're like, dude, you have that board that like you were the freestyle pro. Actually, that's what you did. And you, that was your model. And uh, so how yeah. do you go from that so, to yeah. now shifting to what goes on with mana and you become part of untitled, which is Jude Heald and many other skaters, because I came to faith around 2004 and literally traveling the world after filming, you know, the end and the audio videos and some of the Baker videos and all the rest. I was just like, wait, where are all the people that are sharing Jesus if this is the gospel? And so as I looked around, there was guys like yourself, Paul Anderson, obviously Joe Gruber, a lot of the guys you've already mentioned. Then there was obviously the Reliance guys and the King of Kings and Borders for Christ. Wait a minute, there's actual festivals going around America where these guys have skate parks and festivals. And, and of course, me being a pro skater who, like you said, was much more in the mainstream. I got thrown into those things as well, where probably guys like yourself said, wait, Brian came to faith. And then I would get to go and see all of you guys. But that transition from mana to entitled, how did that work? I mean, because then it became the next, what, 10, 12 years of your life, even to today, traveling, doing ministry. And, and Tim isn't a skater who's like, hey, I love Jesus. He proclaims the truth. He prepares messages. He sits with people. He has a very serious ministry for the pastors of those listening. So help us understand that arch from pro skater to now in the van with Judd and everyone doing it. Yeah, preaching the gospel, traveling, man. But, you know, I'm smiling, Brian, because I do remember when you came to faith, dude. I remember being at a skate shop, and I want to say it was toward the tail end of Birdhouse for you, one of your decks. Um, <laughs> the graphic, I was just like, dude, that, that's a different graphic. Like, that guy, I wonder. I wonder if he's a follow. I wonder if he's hmm. following Jesus. And I obviously knew who you were, man, with the end and, yeah. you know, your stuff prior in 411s and being all that, Being English, yeah. Um, audio. <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh man some of the songs i remember i listen to them now i'm like i skated to that or i said that or i was doing this and my life was crazy anyway so for those who jumped in and are just hearing about tim go look up the rest of my life it was crazy but what was the graphic because it's funny i look at my old birdhouse decks i have a load of them in the garage and it's literally all these graphics about bruce lee then it's an exorcist graphic which is crazy and it's a wish you were here, Pink Floyd, where I'm shaking hands of myself on fire, which is like, okay, am I aware spiritually that I'm dead in sin? And then it was like a Mary graphic because I was beginning to read the Bible. And then it was like a Jesus graphic, a Moses, Abraham, and then a load of graphics with crosses, uh, the gospel, Jesus, Satan. And then I ended up quitting because I wanted to just go and travel around with a bunch of skaters and, and share the gospel on the tail end of who Brian was in that world, you know? So I mean, yeah, it was crazy, man. Whatever board it was, I'm sure it freaked people out. I know that much. It was like, what? You're, you're, yeah. Because Lenny Kirk became a Christian. And he kind of disappeared. And skaters have a track record of kind of having faith. And it's more like a, a rescue from craziness. And then you mm -hmm. don't ever hear from them. Where I feel like the Lord specifically told me, people are going to check in with you every few years. And they're going to see the work he's done with my marriage and listening to a podcast or travel and ministry. And that's going to be the faith he sees, you know, the longevity we finish well. So anyway, Amen. for you, though, you're now, how do you connect with Judd? Because he started Untitled what year? Like 2000? He, he got on un, Untitled around 99. So yeah, me and Judd, we were like, yeah, we've been friends since 2000, since mm -hmm. uh, September of 2000. I was just a couple months old in the Lord, got on that wow. tour, and we didn't stop for three years. I mean, we were part of this management company out of Nashville that was booking rock bands, and they were putting mm -hmm. us everywhere. I mean, we were all year round in a van with the trailer and the demo kit, mm -hmm. preaching Jesus, hundreds of thousands of people. Um, 
you know, it was amazing. It was mm-hmm. amazing. But then we started, we started untitled. I still remember being at Woodward skate camp. We were praying, uh, Judd felt confirmation, him and his wife, and then untitled got started. And again, his passion and his heart was to be in Thrasher, to do ads, to have scripture, mm-hmm. to, to kind of, you know, be in the world, but not of it, be in the yeah. industry, but not of the industry. And, uh, around that time, living it, was the new was was the thing that was yep. going to be new for me kind of the catalyst another season of ministry so mm-hmm. that was Stephen Baldwin and he brought together BMX and skateboarders that were followers of Jesus mm-hmm. um, to put his testimony in and, and then the Palau ministry Luis Palau's ministry funded it yeah and that sold why i'm bringing that up dude that thing sold a half a million copies yeah. a dvd that has that from what i know I that remember. is the, one of the largest most widely distributed yeah. action sports dvds and it became that, like ever. a tract because people it became like people a tract. christians churches would get it and they would yeah. just get them out and i and for those who don't know luis palau is an evangelist from south america argentina who is 80 at least, who has stage four yeah. cancer. We know his family very well. Your wife had been mm-hmm. working there for a long time up till recently, you'd said. And I think they got to a place where they were even getting the DVDs away for like a dollar a piece because they just wanted it to become a track. So if you're right. any kind of church ministry, you just get a load of these DVDs. You go give them to a load of the kids at the skate park. They see Tim, they see bikers. I have people today who bring up the living. I guarantee people listening came to faith because of living it or the second one living in LA. We'll jump to that in a sec. But so you're now getting involved in living it. How does that help? Yeah, that was, that was the jumping off point from going from traveling with the demo kid on a team. Cause I met my wife in that, in, in that era or in that year, excuse me, year 2004, um, we get married and, mm-hmm. and I like, dude, I want to, I, I want to have a job. And mm-hmm. I did, I got invited. This is where it got started for me coming back to the break dancing and the linoleum and putting the sheets of wood together to skateboard yeah. on all that. And I, I got invited to speak at this conference. It was a, it was a actual, uh, uh, actually a regional Baptist conference. So it was a big one. Yeah. And I had five minutes on stage. I put out one sheet of wood. I'm on the stage. I did some tricks. I gave a short talk. I'm out, I leave, I get out in the lobby. They gave me a really nice check. And I'm like, well, yep. that's awesome. That's, such yeah. a ble- that's an encouragement, a blessing. Yeah. And uh, I get out in the lobby and a guy came out and said, hey man, if you could put out a little bit more, if you can put together some sort of a show and more of a talk, is man, you have something, you know, who else is getting on a stage with the skateboard? I'm like, and I just started putting it together. It's like, oh man, yeah. totally. I can, yeah, I get two sheets of plywood, which mm-hmm. is what I had in my garage anyway can find two sheets of wood anywhere in the U.S. at a Home Depot or Lowe's, get a microphone. Anywhere in the world, pretty an much. An iPod. Yeah. Yeah. So anywhere in the world, right. Man, I, yeah. And, and to get somebody to play my iPod and <laughs> I got it. So, and the magic number in those days, if you remember, was, you know, if you were going to get invited in, like Liberty University, I was one of the first skaters to be on their stage. Wow. I actually skated on their stage at Winterfest. I went into a spin and I, my board flew out and actually broke their flat screen, dude. Like when they were like 5,000 bucks, my board popped a flat screen. They didn't really break. It was awesome. You they never got invited like, back? And, oh, I actually did. Oh, okay. <laughs> totally. But you had to they bring invited, a flat screen invited, and bring your own. Yeah, totally. <laughs> It was like Jeremy Camp set up and then me spinning and popping the flat screen. I went right into the message, which was, which was sweet. But again, that's where, so that, that living it, that, that DVD, that whole thing launched mm-hmm. me into this whole new season of ministry where I was going out by myself. I got yeah. plugged in with my, with, a, with another management company that was going to book me and manage what I was doing. And again, it was simple. It was the two sheets of wood. Yep. Um, really, it was a skateboard anywhere at an idea. And yeah. an attitude, I guess. You know, yeah, I was like, yeah. I'm gonna skate anywhere. I'm gonna get crowds of people and I'm gonna preach the gospel. That's what I'm made for. That's where yeah. this didn't happen by chance. I don't have this by chance. A newspaper yeah. in 1985 didn't give book. this to my mom by chance, you know. That's... And 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 if you go on my Instagram, you see the videos, you've seen you've seen some of it, Brian, where it's like, you know, there's yeah. there's just all these crowds, and I'm able to get on that stage and and when I do the larger events, remember people would just put the camera up on my feet to put it on what was called a jumbotron. Yeah. And again, grab that mic and proclaim Christ and him crucified. Yeah. That's all I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, That's all most were... ministries do. It's very specific. It's like, here's where I was. Here's what God did. Here's what we go. Yeah. Just go. Well, I'm just trying to say that it was just, it was really simple. Like if, mm. like if uh, somebody's like, Hey, Brian, I need you to fill 20 minutes on the stage. We have no ramps, no rails, no stairs. You got a yeah. skateboard though. No, most people be like, dude, I, I can't do anything. Yeah. And then so the insurance <laughs> when the overhead would be way too high to even bring stuff and to move stuff around. Mm-hmm. It's a logistical nightmare. 
So that's where I won. And in a sense where it was, I had all these opportunities and Mm -hmm. and so much. So I was 150 days a year on the road. I flew so much. I flew out every single week. I actually had to hire a car service um, and then have friends from my church bringing me in and out, you know, and I'm doing like Willow Creek with Bill Hybels, uh, Brooklyn Tabernacle, Luis Palau, Billy Graham, all so many, all the, all the festivals in the U S I mean, a lot of opportunity. Um, (laughs) Dude, (laughs) what a blessing. Jesus is such a blessing. Yeah. What a blessing that churches pass pastors understood that God was using this because so often we think about the text alone, but just because God's word was recorded on papyri and that's where it was, we shouldn't think that today Paul wouldn't use YouTube. He wouldn't use Zoom. He wouldn't use all these things. You know, if you hear Luis Palau's message from a few episodes ago, he's like, there's someone looking through the internet, looking at boobies, looking at porn. And here comes this Brian Sumner podcast with Tim Ben. You know, he's saying, get him, Jesus. Yeah. And he's saying, evangelist, you know, in his accent, get out there and get him. Just put it everywhere. So why wouldn't God use skateboarding? That begins to happen. Living it comes out, goes everywhere. There's a lot of skate ministries. Living it too, which is living it LA comes out. I was in that and with Jay Hazley, Christian Asoy, a lot of other people that went up a notch, went out a bunch. And then a lot of skate ministries kind of disappeared. It was kind of like a people grew out of it, did whatever. But then obviously Untitled stayed in it. Chris over at Borders for Christ transitioned to planning churches. Now you and Judd still have the pro boards out. You're going around. Untitled becomes one of the few real serious Christian brands. Obviously the brand I'm part of, Reliance, with now today me and Beaver Fleming. But you and Jordan Untitled carried on. And what did those next few years begin to look like? More and more travel, more and more speaking, and lead us into all that, and then even meeting your wife. Yeah. Well, I'd met my wife. We had been married, you know, for quite some time. We've been married 17 years now. Wow. And, uh, oh, oh, yeah, man. I, immediately, we our first year of marriage, I was gone 150 days uh, traveling and preaching the gospel. And we can get into that in a second. But yeah, so Untitled hangs on. I And dude, yeah, just on and on and on. Lots of events. And around 2014, that's when I got on board the Skate Church officially, mm-hmm. which is one of the OG uh, skate ministries in the world, or I think it yeah. might be B1, uh, started in 1987. And so I got officially on board with them in 19 or in 2014. Uh, and uh, yeah, man, so that's what I do now. Yeah, I've been helping run mm-hmm. Skate Church and mm-hmm. being a pastor and doing outreach and uh, still traveling and preaching the gospel. Um, but yeah, you know, I think, yeah, I just, I, you know, Liz, my wife is just so gracious over the years. And one thing we, we learned mm-hmm. early on is just our communication and just coming home and really being together in between my times of traveling. Mm-hmm. And both of us work. I mean, she worked and that was my work and just flying all over the place. And um, but yeah, it was just totally just communication, making sure uh, we were on the same page every single time. Not, you know, the fighting the. I don't know if you guys ever felt this, but you fight that roommate mentality where you'd, you'd want to be more than roommates like want to be intimate where you know we're mm-hmm. husband and wife we love each mm-hmm. other through and you through need to be one flesh man that's then that's where ministry begins it begins at home if it's going to be healthy outside so yeah man and i just I, you know, god's just given me just a great wife who's always just been super understanding <laughs> and just like go get him for jesus and like yeah she's dude my wife she's like that she's still well, like just that. for those like, listening for jesus we're praying go <laughs> because some young guys years, could be man. like i want to be zealous like brian i want to be zealous like tim I don't go away for more than four days often, unless normally there's someone going with me. I'm going to Costa Rica for 10 days, for England for nine, 10 days. So I know for yourself, you would go in a few days a weekend, you'd be back. And you hear about these stories, even of great men of God, like Billy Graham. Sometimes he was gone for three months or six months. I'm like, I get it. But I don't think the Lord needs you gone that much. I'm not bashing Billy Graham because he was a pioneer in that day. But if I was gone for even three weeks to a month to six months, I'd feel like who's parenting my kids. You get a limited amount of time with them growing up. So obviously you and your wife were able to maintain that. She was on board. You were equally yoked. That got you through many of those years. We're both kind of locked down right now. We can't go international. But like you said, I'll go into places to preach as a preacher. Sometimes the pastor will be like, Brian, bring a skateboard. He'll put a piece of wood, do a couple of tricks, all over the pastor's kid. Or if there's a big enough stage, you know, all the over one of the worship leaders, you can literally go into anywhere, put down two pieces of wood. So you are still getting to do a lot of traveling ministry. I still see that in the U.S. So that's all going on. And then I would say what you've got the management company that was booking you 100, 150 times a year. It's great ministries out there. You're one of the first guys I recommend that people have Tim Ben come in. 
It's simple. Get some wood, fly them in, take care of them, do what you do, you know, between you and the church. The gospel will be preached. Kids will see skateboarding. We'll see it's relevant to this day. The gospel is always relevant, but why not use every means for where they are to connect with them? Um, and speeding this up, though, this really lands you in Portland at Skate Church. I have to kind of preface this because this is kind of the skate church that really Paul Anderson from way back in the day. This is where many people came to faith. I think you even told me seven or 800 kids have been through that over the past year. And this is where guys like Tim Mackey came to faith at the Bible Project. Um, obviously, you're there, Josh White, Paul, many other leaders. Um, Tim Mackey will jump in and preach. I mean, this is a hub. So, so what is going on with Skate Church for those who might hear and go, what is this? How does a church have some kind of skate ministry? But yeah, man. Uh, yeah. So last year we had 800 come through and uh, it's a free skate park to skate indoor. Awesome park. Mm. All that's all just Paul Anderson's, you know, just his architects, yeah. you know, architecture, you know, skate mm. park vibe. Um, he's brilliant. Great layout. Um, so yeah, it's free, but anybody that comes to our park, got to stay for the talk. And it's been that way since the eighties. It's mm. never changed. It's, it's, skateboarding and preach the gospel yeah. it's, and it's also discipleship there's a bible study but it's mm -hmm. like you know a good park it draws dudes come in we take a 30 minute break in the white plastic chairs and they call it the talk and uh, what's funny is it wasn't actually originally called skate church in the mm -hmm. 80s it had some goofy term and the skaters in the area started calling it skate church they're like yeah. there was just like a coin mock term for yeah. it um, but yeah, thousands have given their lives to Jesus. A lot of our leaders in our city learn to preach at skate church. Yep. Um, yeah, we run five nights a week. If we include our, our recovery night, we have a lot of addicts that need some help. So we do a Friday night for that, but yeah, we have to break it up by age groups. Like most skate ministries, it's like just kind of a free for all come in, yeah. we'll all sit down. I mean, we have again, 800, I mean, just in our over 18 alone, dudes, mm -hmm. our age, I mean, it's like, dude, 300 alone that come for that. Well, I know so, yeah, even man. just getting sponsored coming over here, looking up to guys like Matt Beach or, you know, around the same time I came up, guys like Jamie Fortune, I remember they would go to skate checks. They would have footage at this skate park. It would be in videos, an amazing park. People took it for what it was, where you're from, you know, home and Nike, all the rest. You had Phil Trotter, Matt Beach, a lot of these guys. And it isn't just like some guys skating five, four to five nights a week. So if I go into town, hey, Brian, can you preach tonight? There'll be a 15, 20 minute message. The kids expect it. So when someone isn't preaching, they're like, who's our speaker tonight? That's how it's set up. It's a nonprofit. Obviously there's a board and there's accountability, but here's something more serious amidst all of this, this year, have you seen a change in what's been going on in the hearts of those who've been coming through your doors? Have you seen COVID affect them, life affect them, the lockdown affect them? And what is going on with the youth in Portland throughout the skate church? Yeah, well, Skate Church is is located in a pretty rough part of the city. I mean, we're in Northeast mm -hmm. Portland. Um, yeah, a lot of crime, uh, prostitution, drugs, homelessness. A lot of stuff goes on around there. Yeah, um, we have we have been in a lockdown, but we're still in touch with our guys. Um, and dude, the stories that we're hearing. I mean, it's mm -hmm. you know being at home during a lockdown for a lot of our our skaters. I mean, it's like a, it's a war zone at home. It's not yeah. fun. I and mean, skateboarding for a lot of dudes is just an outlet skate church is a family and even the guys yeah. come to find out you know when they come and they sit in the chair and they kind of heckle the, the preacher or whatever I mean, they're the ones who appreciate it, it, it's crazy yeah. they kind of appreciate it the most they're like they respect this is something yeah. right deep down inside they're the guys who who just who will tell you off to the side like man this is a consistency for me because my mm. home life is this and I've got this going on. Mm. And again, we, we, we get to hear those stories. One, our longevity, we can see some of these guys get to grow, you know, they grow up and yeah. they come back and talk with you and you realize what, what God has done in their life and how mm -hmm. state church and the ministry affected them. But yeah, in the immediate sense, Oh dude, it's rough. I mean, Portland is rough right now. I mean, you're seeing a lot on the news. There's a lot of lockdowns. There's a lot of board boarded up buildings and windows. People are leaving the city. Um, wow. We had four nine millimeter rounds fired into our building a, a month ago. I mean, mm. it's on and on. Um, Not because it's skate church. So, though, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just because where skate church is located. That, so all yeah, the pastors we just happen we're about, located. Don't start a skate <laughs> church. You're gonna get shot. So. <laughs> you know, but you know, I say all of that, but we love it. We want to be there. We want to have a presence. We want to shine the light of Christ. Mm -hmm. It's a hub where lives are really 
changed and yeah. have been changed. I mean, it's a, to me, I am not the dude who started it. I didn't make the ramps, but I can say this. It is a historic ministry in the city mm-hmm. of Portland, Oregon, period. I don't care what anybody says, Yeah, you know, and Paul is a legend in the skateboard ministry world yeah. and paul is he he doesn't want to do podcast you won't get him on an interview i'm gonna get him on writing just book anytime him. soon i'm getting I hope him you on, do, yeah. but... <laughs> he won't do it <laughs> dude, dude he does, he's just but that's what's <laughs> rad about him he's just dude he's the coolest guy but he's been consistent with what god has called him to do yeah. and i'm so stoked to be a part of it to be a missionary under it Amen. under that leadership um under that accountability which is huge man mm-hmm um, no, it's not. Yeah, it's man, not guys just, playing around. And just to qualify what Tim said, straight up, they were not shot at because it's escape ministry. There was a bunch of gangsters in a certain neighborhood. They popped off 150 shots, and four of them hit the building. And um, if you start escape ministry, other than when it's time for your church to be persecuted, Acts 1:8, you'll be martyrs unto me. And um, that's the only time things are going to stop for you. But it's true. Uh, skate church, skating is a religion. It's a family. You know what everyone's doing. You know what tricks are coming out. You don't realize it, but from the age of 15, I mean, obviously till I got married, I was on a skateboard four or five, six hours a day. That takes away so much of the chaos of life. I didn't get into these crazy fights in my 15, 16, 17, because I was out skating. You begin to really hone your craft and focus on you. So when skaters can show up and maybe they're making fun of Tim that day, oh, here he goes with the God stuff. But you know what? Tim Mackey went there, would get stoned. I think he lived in his parents' basement. He told me he would go to Taco Bell afterwards. And eventually one of the guys at Skate Church says, so what are you going to do with Jesus? And so he went on a missionary trip what, around the world, went to Hebrew school. And now they're doing the, the Bible project ministry. But God's at work there. So in all of this, Tim, I know as I travel, I feel like I'm always really blessed. I encounter amazing people. There's great things that happen. But do you have any kind of crazy stories or just one good example of going somewhere and anything because because if i'm inviting tim in who's invited you in has anything crazy ever happened you could share with us for some humor amid covid and craziness <laughs> dude i got a crazy wood brother all righty oh man so this was probably over 10 years ago this was at a time when my my management company they're booking me week after week a lot is coming in mm-hmm. through the fax machine in those days and some email but uh <laughs> one of the contracts kind of got you, you know, it's supposed to be some filtering, some vetting. This one slipped through. So I found myself in Mississippi. Um, I can't, I want to say it's probably Jackson I flew into. I, I get off, the, I get off the plane. I get mm-hmm. my bags. I'm out waiting for whomever's picking me up. I'm just assuming it's another night. I'm going to go skate, preach the gospel. Next day is another flight. Well, this guy picks me up. Mm-hmm. Nice guy. But usually I, when I'm, when I'm riding with somebody, you know, kind of trying to get to know them, where, where are they at with Jesus? What's the, what, what's the expectations of me, the guy coming in and I'm not hearing anything about Jesus. And he just, he was a nice guy, but I remember he kept referencing me as entertainment. You're going to be the entertainment tonight, <laughs> dude. And I'm driving for hours at this point. We're in the woods and it's starting to get dark. It's, and it is summertime. So yeah. it's like dusk and it's green. And we go to this, like a camp, like typical camp with the wood, yeah. um, kind of that entrance, you know, with the wood log that says the, the name and, or the brand. And it said something, something Baptist. So I'm like, okay, this is going to be some sort of Baptist camp. So I'm going to preach the Baptist gospel. Church. You know, totally, some sort of, yeah, whatever it is, dude. But I get into this thing mm-hmm. and it's all, the, and, it, and again, it's, it's getting kind of dark, but I look and it's just all these older people and families and kids. And I'm thinking to myself, this is a unique camp. Like usually, mm-hmm. you know, it's a, it's a few staff wearing the same t-shirt. There's a bunch of kids running around. You're there to do some skating and preach. Dude, lo and behold, man. David Koresh I, I, shows up. Oh, bro. It's, it's, so, yes, dude, it's so <laughs> crazy. Dude. Yeah, yeah, totally. He was a guest that night. No, um, he was the opening act. Um, dude, I, I get in there and I sit through one of the talks, no Bible, no scripture, and I'm thinking, okay, this, this, this feels off, like way off. <laughs> and, uh, I, but I kept telling them, they kept, they kept saying, well, you know, they were excited that I was there. They were going to be entertaining. And what they thought was, dude, what you have to say won't have any effect on us. No you know, way. so you can do whatever you want on our stage. That's what I was told. So I go in mm. my little cabin and I pray, I get fired up, man, I'm going to go preach the gospel. I know. And, uh, I'm in the green room that and I'm getting ready to go on I look on the stage there's this guy he's got no shirt on he's got war paint on he's chanting and jumping up and down in front of everybody (laughs) um that was kind of the message part dude it was nuts I'm looking out there going okay 
the the good news is I'm like, man, no matter how bad I skate did I, like I dude, this is a this is a win. Mm. Like I'm gonna skate on the stage. I know there's some teenagers out here, they're gonna be hyped. Like as long as you say crazy. Jesus Jesus once, someone's like with the be war paint. <laughs> well anyway, so I get on I get on the stage, dude, and I go into my tricks and then get through with my routine. I grab the mic. And I start proclaiming Christ, you know, we've all sinned. We've fallen short of God's perfect glory. Mm. Um, the wages of sin's death, the free gift of God is, is, is Jesus, um, life in Jesus. And Jesus being the way, the truth, the life, there's no other way to God but through him. Like it's mm. exclusive. Like it's only through Jesus that you can have life. And uh, dude, I remember as I'm saying that, just the crowd turned. On. I mean, it was, dude, they just turned on me. They were, it was just crossed arms and they were just staring at me. And it was like a dude, it was a weird setting. It was like a bingo hall. It was old mm-hmm. people. It smelled, it had a weird smell to it. It was just, there was 500 plus people in this little room. It was crazy it was packed. And as I'm sharing, there was a lady um, with this kind of this queen get up on like she looked like a queen a princess i don't know whatever you want wow. and she's coming at me and i know she's about to take the microphone away from me something's happened like i'm saying something that people aren't excited about right <laughs> i'm proclaiming mm-hmm. christ you know like escape hell give your life to jesus dude like stop playing around but i'm so that's my life at this time i'm not mm-hmm. trying to you know pick on people i'm not trying to be there to be uh abrasive mm-hmm. like this is you need to hear this it's the this gospel who, who you yeah. brought in tonight it's the gospel totally um yeah, I wasn't trying to like just get get on him. Did she have and, a spear? So, dude, <laughs> she came over, dude, and she she grabs a mic from me. She takes it, and instead of leaving, I remember, you know, usually when you get off stage, how you leave kind of back or side to side. Dude, I just got my board and went right through the crowd. Like, got right off the front of the stage and cut through people. People just parted. They were just like, yeah, like who's this guy? I can't believe you just prayed and you said all. It was gnarly. And I get to my room and dude, I'm, I'm only a few years old in the Lord at this time. And I still remember yeah. getting into my, my little room. And I remember praying, I said, God, what in the world? Like, why was I here tonight? Cause I'm used to seeing yeah. response. I'm used to being a, a part of a, you know, at least a in a family event where people are like, we, we brought yeah. you here. We brought you here to share the gospel, but this was, it was none of that. They brought me here to be in entertainment and they had no idea what I was going to say. And to them, wow. again, they said they had no power. We don't care. Basically that's what they were saying. It has no mm. power over us. Doesn't matter to us. You can do what you want. Just do your thing. Mm. so anyway man i wake up the next day this is a crazy part of the story i wake up the next day i'm just you know hopefully somebody's going to come and pick me up and take me back to the airport i'm in the woods man i'm all alone there's no cell phone service there's nothing there's just me wow yeah so i wake up and i'm just hoping that somebody's going to come and get me so i open my door and there's this dude this little this kid he's sitting outside my door it's probably eight in the morning. It's early. And I opened the door and I looked down and I'll never forget his, I can see his face in my mind's eye, but I, but I remember looking at him and goes, Hey, my name's Michael. I said, Hey, Michael, how's it going? He goes, Hey man, you said some stuff last night. That was that, that he, I don't know how he put it. He said something along the lines of that hit me something. Mm-hmm. I want to talk to you more about it. He had skipped out on the mornings, whatever they were doing that morning in terms of, you know, the group, he sat outside my door for, quite some time you know come to find out well anyway we get up long story short i walk with michael i, I talk with him I, I lead him to jesus he he totally gets this thing called sin and we're talking and he, he you know it's making sense to him he has that aha moment he says well pray for me and then as we're walking i'm you know, i'm trying to find some coffee somewhere nearby if, you know if they had anything like that and uh i started i asked him i was asking him about what they believe because no we don't believe anything about jesus no heaven no hell um because tim matter of fact i don't really know a lot about what what that is um mm. and anyway dude long you know I, I still i still to this day man looking back i did get out of there obviously made it alive but one of their guys uh, picked you up and took you to the airport yeah but didn't say a word to me on the way back i mean it was cold man it was just like we're going back um but you know i, I remember thinking about that i told my management company like oh man you know it's kind of a yeah, i know it probably looked like it was a mistake no was way. It? Yeah. It wasn't a no. mistake, right? But because listen, dude, it's because I could skate with two sheets of wood going yeah. back to this. Yeah. That made me accessible to go everywhere and anywhere. It got me on that stage in a cult, yeah. like under the guise of a skateboarder. And then God's spirit used that and moved. And mm. I know hearts were convicted that night. Obviously, this kid Michael says, Hey, I want it. I want to know Jesus as my Lord mm-hmm. and my Savior. I want what you have. Mm-hmm. and bro so there it is that was my craziest one and I, I i'm leaving out some of the details and just the feeling of it i mean it was nuts i mean you well, got a picture you're all alone you're in the woods of mississippi uh there's no contact it is what it is well, if and you i'm look preaching at, 
every other religion, every other religion, then if it's not the truth, it all must be a cult. I get the whole coexist and the blah, blah, blah. But if you look at every other religion, the table of nations, the divine council, we're hearing about more, the whole Genesis 6, everything else, if it came from the father of lies, is a cult in some way anyway. So you just went out. I mean, I'm not saying for the evangelists, go anywhere anyone invites you. There was times the spirit of God or the spirit of Jesus stopped the disciples from going somewhere. But you went there. You did what God called you to. I hope someone listening to this actually was there that day and remembers it. And we get a crazy message for what God did because Michael was touched by the Lord. Hallelujah. And I know we haven't got that much time left, but closing up though, are we going to talk about anything else? Where's the, sh- where's the sneakers? What's up with the collectibles? All the rest. <laughs> We're sw- <laughs> switching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Switching it up. Perhaps. I mean, God is good. Dude. Look what he did. They've heard by yeah. now of his power, of his grace and his mercy, but one of the things about you, Tim, is you're in Portland where there's so much activity, a lot of sneakerheads there. I'm not a sneakerhead, but you're a sneakerhead. Um, you and myself and Jared Sykes out in Kansas are on kind of a chat on our text because you guys all collect figures and I kind of started looking at the Mandalorian more recently. So we all joke about that. Um, but but what, what what's the deal with sneakers? I mean, how does someone like you get this hooked on your Nikes and all the rest? Yeah. Well, it's like, it's like YouTube, right? It goes back yeah. to you. I mean, I mean, now you're talking about shoes. I mean, I think all skateboarders mm-hmm. like their shoes. I mean, yeah. looking down at your feet, you want to feel fresh. You want to have a pair that feels good, that looks mm-hmm. good, that matches the fit. I mean, we can go, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's pretty much across the board. Yeah, yeah. Um, but all of us have these weird, I wouldn't say all of us, but a lot of skaters, you know, mm-hmm. Steve Caballero, Lance, you yeah. name it. Weird collections, things they get into is, an, is maybe an outlet, mm-hmm. a way of escape from you know, kind of just the craziness of the everyday. And mm. too, man, I mean, the life we get to have by the grace of God, dude, for mm-hmm. us, I mean, it lends itself to, there's that little bit of freedom that you have too, which is fun and other ways mm. to connect with different communities. And yeah, so one of them, obviously, man, shoes, dude, I go, man, yeah, it goes back to the break dance. It goes mm-hmm. back to just loving shoes. It started, now. bro, check it. Yeah. I actually got them. This is where it started. Okay, this is so a Jordan I... 1, yeah. 1985. This is called <laughs> the band. <laughs> and where this started was psycho skate vision psycho skate mark mm-hmm. gonzalez i saw him skating in these i grew up skating more into the adidas and and puma yeah um not skating wearing because that was like a, a break dance thing but dude these man so this is a skate shoe though you I can imagine somebody playing basketball are they around time, from, right? is that from back then or are they reissues this this is a reissue this yeah. is a, i think 2016 but okay. dude and then it gets it gets into the hype stuff like you know you get all the sneakers and preacher stuff i know mm-hmm. people at nike man i live mm-hmm. in beaverton so yeah. you know there's d's tim's a sneaker the head tim likes these things he collects with them he meets oh, his I friends at lunch <laughs> we're not talking about the preachers who are out there spending thousands and thousands of dollars to look, you know, fly on the stage as if God needs you to have wealth to mean that he's good. Um, and then we have, and I'm joking, I wanted to say that because I wanted people to see that here's Tim off in a cult preaching the gospel. Look at this. If you're on YouTube, he's got a shoe. Going know, right? Here's There's the so important many. thing. Well, here's the thing yeah. people are missing. And I was talking to my buddy Damon the other day and he was just like, man, America's falling apart. Kids are freaking out. And I'm like, look, nothing has changed as far as our share in the gospel every day. Whether you are Tim skating in a church, whether you are skating in a cult, whether you are talking sneakers with someone, all of us can relate to people somewhere. I know we've gone a bit longer today. Uh, Tim's enjoying his Starbucks. Jude's running around right here in the kitchen, ready to get me off the podcast. We're going to go hang out. But here's the thing I want you to see about Tim. Uh, Tim is a professional skater. He's a husband. He's someone who's a lot of traveling ministry. Hit him up, get a hold of him, invite him in. He uses a sneaker um, obsession. We'll say that because you love sneakers. But anywhere we are on the aisles of Target, at the skate park, at the beach, the housewife, the accountant, all of us, the Bible says, he who wins souls is wife. The laborers, are they few? That's a call to go because the harvest has not changed since the moment Jesus went into heaven till the moment he returns. COVID doesn't stop the harvest. Conspiracies don't stop the harvest. None of this stops the harvest. You and me not going stops the harvest. So Brian's here on the podcast going, Tim's going, We'll go as doors open. And I want to just thank people for listening. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for partnering. Thanks for listening to us. But Tim, how can they hear more about you, your online presence, a website, even people that want to invite you out, or as someone that raises full-time support, 
even go alongside and partner with Tim's ministry. We don't have salaries. We both raise support as this year closes out. If you'd like to support what we do, and I'm saying that to boast in Tim because Tim won't do it, but all these podcasts are because people support. Everywhere I go, and all the rest is because of support. Likewise with Tim. How do they get a hold of Tim Burr? Yeah, just go to uh, my website, uh, T-I-M-B-Y-R-N-E.org. So my name, timburn.org, um, Instagram, Facebook. I'm easy to reach. I mean, I'm not cool. Mm-hmm. So, you know, dude, like you could email me through the booking tab on my page um, or just message me, you know, just send me a DM. I'll respond. If you have any questions for what was said today, if I could, Amen. you know, uh, expand on anything that I'd said that you want to hear more about. Yeah, just let me know. If you know and, uh, Michael. Yeah. If, Michael if you is know Michael. There. Totally, dude. That'd be I mean, why not? That'd God's sovereign. Awesome. Yeah. That's, that'd be awesome. And then any closing thoughts? I know you'd shared a verse with me the other day. Anything just to close? Guys, listen. As much as we're just casually talking about Jesus, what is what the life of a believer is like, we're in this so much. You might be out there without hope. Tim has shared many times with me. He's seeing the hopelessness of a generation right now, whether it's grasping for patriotism, whether it's opposing this in politics, whether it's running off into affairs or substance, the flesh is weak. All hope is only found in Christ. All things are made by him and for him. As much as Tim can enjoy all these things like skating or shoes or figures as we goof off or or joking around about cults, we're only really satisfied in the rock of ages, Jesus Christ himself. So for those listening, open up the Bible, God's word. Go sit in a church service. God will speak. He'll speak the truth to you. Prick your heart about who you are, your need for forgiveness, God's love, grace, and mercy. But Tim, any closing thoughts on that before your prayers out? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to end on what's been speaking to me. It's the end of Philippians uh, 4. It's rejoice Amen. in the Lord always, right? We could use some of that always, Amen. not sometimes, always. Always. Um, let your gentleness be known to all. Uh, the mm-hmm. Lord is near. Be reminded of that. God is near. He, he's right there. But, but when you talk to God, come to him with a posture of thanksgiving, right? We just celebrated that this week thanksgiving and with that said it links into this next part god gives us peace that surpasses all understanding and it's that very thing that will guard our minds and our hearts in christ jesus it guards our hearts and our minds from the devil's attack because you can bet dude he's out there he's wanting to steal kill and destroy all of us but jesus says i've come to give you life life to the fullest and the peace of christ is found when you lay it all down Thank God for what you do have. And in the craziness of all that's going on, have the peace of Christ that surpasses all understanding. And that's Mm -hmm. the very thing that will guard your hearts and your mind in this season right now and in all seasons. Love you. That's it. Tim, would you pray us out really quick? Yeah. Yeah. Father God, thanks for opportunities. Um, I do pray, Father, that uh, what was said here today um, would just hit some hearts. Um, Yeah, Lord Jesus, I pray for changed lives. Um, Thank you for Brian, his wife, their faithfulness, continue to bless their ministry. Thank you for just providing for us in every which way. We have so many rad stories. Um, God, you're so good. Thanks for using us. Thanks for things like this, where we can talk through a device um, and and talk to others as well and proclaim your name, Jesus. That's rad. To use skateboards, to action figures, to sneakers, just what Brian was saying. It's so sweet how we can just connect with so many people and just shine your light, Lord Jesus. Thank you that your spirit's alive and in us, that we have new life in you. And those that don't know you, God, I just pray that they would put their trust in you today. They would call on your name and confess you, Jesus, as their Lord, ask you to forgive their sin and know what it means to be born again, to be filled with your spirit and made new. And so God, just thank you for opportunities like this. In Jesus name. Amen. Well, guys, thank you, Tim. Thank you, listeners. If you want to come and partner with this ministry, get the word out. Tell people who were maybe mentioned in it, be praying for it. And briansumner.net slash support for me, timban.com for his website. The Apostle Paul wrote, and Tim said this earlier, That the message of the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing. That's those who don't know God. But to us, if we're forgiven, hidden in Christ, have unity with him. It's the power of God on a salvation, guys. We love you all. Be praying. Hit up Tim. Talk to you next episode. God bless. Amen. Amen.